Oh look, it's Tundra time. Let's try something fun. Let's take a base or mid-level model 2022 Toyota Tundra, like this one. Let's purposely avoid paying too much for factory upgrades. Then let's add select rough country parts to said 2022 Toyota Tundra to get the personalized vibe we're after. Finally, we'll take all that moolah we saved and go on an adventure in our very good looking rough country 2022 Toyota Tundra. That's the plan on this episode of The Build Up, to take this Tundra from basic to badass with a few simple tweaks. The fun starts right now. Hey guys, Gaston with Rough Country. Really excited about this build up, a 2022 Tundra, and we're gonna show you how subtle changes can make all the difference in the world. The first thing we're gonna address are the chrome accents. This grill surround, as well as sections of the rear bumper, just don't really fit in with the motif of this truck. The emblems are matte black, the trim around the windows is matte black, and the door handles are color matched. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna remove the chrome pieces and have those color matched. So we're not gonna start on the rack. I'm gonna pull this off. Unfortunately, I have to pull most of the front end off to get this grill shell off. Once I do that and remove the sections of the rear bumper, we'll send those off to paint and we'll get this up on the rack and begin the lift install. The recently de-chromed Tundra is in place and ready to get up on the lift. But before we do that, let's go over the three and a half inch kit and see what all is included. We're going to start over here. We've got our tubular upper control arms. These are going to correct the suspension geometry, make sure we get a proper alignment and keep that factory ride going over. We've got our sway bar relocation brackets as well as our differential relocation brackets. Over here, we've got our strut spacers for the front, which is where our lift is going to come from. Coming to the back here, we've got our rear track bar bracket. We've got our rear shock relocation brackets. And finally, we've got our rear coil spacers that are gonna bring the rear up. Let me roll this out of the way. We'll get the Tundra up in the air to a reasonable level so we can remove the tires without hurting ourselves. And then we'll get started. Uh, for now, let's go ahead and get the Tundra up in the air. First step to installing the lift is removing the factory skid plate. So this is some sort of composite. I'd be more inclined to call it a debris deflector than a skid plate, but we've got some steel ones going on. All right, with the factory debris deflector out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and unplug the electronic steering. This will protect it from the shock of having the tie rod separated and uh, also keep it from damaging the electronic steering sensors while we move those tie rods around installing the lift. Uh, after that, we're going to go ahead and remove the factory sway bar. We've got points on the frame as well as points on the lower control arms. All right, we've got the driver's side knuckle out of the way. Now we need to address the driver's side upper control arm. What we're going to need to do is lower the truck down, get under the hood, remove the air box on the driver's side, remove the ECU, and then we'll be able to slide that upper control arm bolt out. The passenger side, it slides right out without an issue, but we've got some stuff holding us up on the driver's side, so we need to deal with it. Because we are unhooking the ECU, the first thing we need to do is unhook the battery. So we'll get over here, unhook the battery, then everything else is gonna happen on the driver's side. So I've brought the truck up to a more comfortable working level. We're gonna go ahead and install the upper control arm. Once I get that bolt in and we'll go ahead and finger tighten down the nut, then we'll drop the truck back down so I can reinstall the ECU and the air box. We 
We are finished with the portion of the front lift that is inside the wheel well. We've replaced our strut with our upper strut spacer. We've added our upper control arm. We've added our brake line relocation bracket. And we've went through and reinstalled everything that we took off to make removing the strut possible. Now we're ready to lower the differential with a differential relocation bracket drop the sway bar down with the sway bar relocation brackets and the last step in finalizing the front will be to add our skid plates hopefully our paint works back and we'll be able to do that as well So I've got this driver side bracket installed loosely on the frame. Now we've got a spacer that goes in between the bracket and the differential to make up for the recess that is in the differential. Uh, since the bracket's flat and the diff is not, this makes up the difference. We will slide it into place and then bolt the bracket to the differential. With the sway bar drop brackets in place, we'll go ahead and grab the factory sway bar. We'll install the end links onto the lower control arms, then swing the unit up and bolt it in place on the drop brackets. All right, making our way to the rear. Uh, the rear, as is usual on lift kits, is going to be a lot simpler than the front. Uh, we've got coil spring spacers for this particular Tundra. We've got relocation brackets for the shocks, relocation bracket for the track bar, and assorted hardware. We're going to go ahead and get a couple of stands underneath the axle. That way we can drop it down, give us plenty of clearance to pull those coils out, add those spacers, and those relocation brackets. All right, with our coils and shocks out, this bracket where our hard lines connect to our soft lines in the rear needs to be brought down. We'll go ahead and remove it from the frame. All right, with the track bar relocation bracket installed, the next step is gonna to be to install the coils. We've already got the coil spacers up and in their place. We'll get the coils in on both sides, then we'll install the shocks, and that's gonna complete the lift for the rear. We'll be ready for wheels and tires. We've got our coils installed and we rotated them around to make sure that the end of the coil fits in the pocket properly. Now we're ready to install our shocks. All right, we've made sure that everything we touched in the rear is nice and tight. Now we're gonna take a look at the wheels and tires we chose. What we're going with this round is a Nitto Trail Grappler in a 35 12 50 20. We've got it wrapped around a TIS off-road. This is a 556 BA. BA stands for black and anthracite on the rock ring. This is a 20 by nine and a negative 20 millimeter offset. It's gonna fit the Tundra perfect. Also, the black is a nice flat black. It's gonna match our emblems and our wheel well moldings. And with the chrome deleted, this Tundra is gonna look sick.
we're going to go ahead and install our steps. And which steps have we chosen? We're going to put the SR2 modular aluminum step on this. Uh, for now, we're going to go ahead. Our first step is going to be to remove the factory bolts. Once we get those out of the way, we'll put this in place, finalize our positioning, and bolt it up. All right, we've got our mounting brackets hand tight so we can move them into position once we get under the tundra. Let's go ahead, lift it up, get it in place, install the step. Luckily, it's aluminum. It's nice and light. I'm going to bring it over and set it on the arms till I get in position. Now this Tundra did not come with factory steps, but Toyota has been nice enough to go ahead and put the bolts for the steps that would be installed in place. We're going to reuse those to mount our SR2s. Now that I've got the mounting brackets secured to the rocker, we'll go ahead and finalize the position of the rail itself as well as the steps and cinch everything down. This is a great step. It's a rail system. You can adjust exactly where your stirrups are to fit you specifically. And that's how easy the SR2 steps install in the Tundra. They mount right into a factory location using hardware that Toyota included. They're matte black so they match the emblems and the wheels we've selected. They're a nice angular design so they flow with the body lines perfectly. In the meantime, our paintwork's come back, so now we're ready to install our grill and bumper cover as well as our rear bumper caps. We'll go ahead, mount all that up, get it installed, then we'll lift the truck up for the final time, install our skid plates, and cinch down the lower portion of the bumper cover. Once we're done with that, we're gonna top this build off with the installation of our flush mount hard tonneau. Let's get started. All right, now we're ready to install our low profile hard tonneau cover on the Tundra. I've got our hardware laid out here. I'll go over what everything is, starting with the clamps themselves. Uh, these clamps are going to slide into the factory cargo management rail. They'll slide in and then they'll clamp down on the rails for the cover. Next up, we have the rails themselves. These will affix to the cargo management rail on the Tundra. They've got specific locations for the clamps themselves to uh, attach to, and they also have drain ports so that any water that makes its way past the cover itself won't make it into your bed. That brings us to the drain tubes themselves. These will attach to the bottom of the rail. And finally, we've got our cover clamps. These clamp the initial panel, the panel closest to the back window of the truck, directly to the rail. The first step is gonna to be to remove the end caps on the cargo management rail, and then we'll slide in our clamps. All right, so we've got our rail is set in place so we know what position each clamp goes in. Uh, we'll loosen the clamps to where they can go around the mounting point on the rail and we'll make sure they are in the position we want and we'll cinch those back down. All right, we've got both sides of our cover rails installed. Now we're gonna add a hole for our drain tube. On this episode of The Build Up, we concentrated on how subtle changes can make dramatic differences. And I think the end results speak for themselves. 
Let's talk about what we did to this 2022 Tundra. First and foremost was the Rough Country three and a half inch lift. Now this isn't a massive lift, but it is bigger than a leveling kit and it's all we needed to run 35, 12, 50, 20s on this Tundra. This kit includes upper control arms and differential drop brackets to maintain the factory geometry. Up front, lift is achieved with a strut spacer and out back, we use a coil spring spacer. Also included for the rear is a track bar bracket and shock relocation brackets. Now I mentioned the tire size, let's talk about wheels and tires. On this build, we used a Nitto Trail Grappler in the 35 12 50 20. We wrapped that around a TIS Off-Road 556BA. Now some may question running a mud tire on a daily driver. I've run a Trail Grappler on a couple of different dailies and I feel like it's tame enough for the street without sacrificing any off-road ability and it's just one of the better tires on the market as far as looks go. We took cues from Toyota's matte black emblems as well as window trim and wheel well trim when choosing the matte black TIS wheel and also the matte black SR2 step. The SR2 is an aluminum rail step so you can position each stirrup exactly where you want it and position the rail itself exactly where you want it on the rocker. The angles on the SR2 complement the overall design of the Tundra and it's got a nice wide footprint that makes getting into a lifted vehicle a breeze. Now back, we installed Rough Country's low profile hard tonneau cover to make sure that the contents of the bed were safe from the elements and light fingers. And finally, we stripped all of the chrome off the truck and had it painted to match the body. And it made a major difference. That chrome grill shell and rear bumper stuck out like a sore thumb. They didn't match any other thing on the truck. And now this truck is a beauty in red and matte black. What do you think about what we did? Do you like the grill shell body color? Should we have went matte black with it, left it chrome? Leave your comments and let us know. We love to hear from you. Also, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to see what we're doing next. And we'd love to see your vehicle. Check out roughcountry.com and upload it to the gallery today. Until next time, I'm Gaston.